This, my friends, is the Pow Kitty RGB 10 Max 3. It's a retro handheld to play your retro games on. Is it good? Yes. Is it amazing? No. Is it cheap? Yes. Is it the best value handheld ever? No. Is it fun to use? Yes. Is it going to change your life? No. Does it look cool? Yes. Does it have a stupid name? <laughs> of course not. Why would, why would you say such a thing? Hello, TechDweeb here. You're there. That's, that's where we are. Let's talk about stuff. I think it's safe to say at this point that nobody can predict what our friend Pow Kitty is going to do next. Some of their devices are good, and some of them aren't. Some of them push the boundaries and do super interesting things, and some don't. Sometimes they learn from their mistakes, and sometimes they don't. And this isn't just me being bitter that we still haven't gotten a refresh of the Pow Kitty V90. It's also just me being bitter in general, because I'm an old man and I'm out of black licorice. But we're not here to talk about my sore back or my bifocals. We're here to talk about this, the Pow Kitty RGB 10 Max 3. And I think we can all agree that it's a really, really stupid name. <laughs> Stupider than most of the stupid names that these things get named. My best friend Russ from Retro Game Corps did a video explaining why this thing has such a stupid name. Check that out if you want to know why these things happen. But I don't care why. I hate it so much. Heck, I could come up with a better name in like two seconds, probably. Okay, I, I need a few more seconds, I guess. P pooby Doop. Pooby, pooby Doop. <laughs> the Pow Kitty Pooby Doop. <laughs> the more you say it, the funnier it gets. Pooby Doop. Pooby Doop. Pooby Doop. <laughs> the Pow Kitty Pooby Doop is actually a really interesting little thing. I'm a big fan of this little guy. It ticks a lot of the boxes that need to be ticked for me to be truly happy with a thing. It's comfortable, decent controls, great screen, great system, interesting form factor, a bunch of bells and whistles, and it looks cool. It's not going to change the world or anything, but it doesn't really need to. It just needs to be good and a good value. And it is both of those things. And we already fixed the biggest problem, which is the name. So let's dive into the pooby doop and see what this thing's deal is, shall we? Yep! This Pow Kitty Pooby Doop was sent to me by my good friends over at Lit NXT. They sell this, and they sell other stuff too. If you want this or other stuff, check out the link in the word place below. The Pooby Doop, formerly known as the RGB 10 Max 3, is powered by, yep, you guessed it, the RK3566 chip. I know lots of people hate on this thing, but like, it works. And I'd rather have a chip that has good firmware support than some new thing that we'll have to wait on. Looking at you, RG35XX Plus, we get one gigabyte of LPDDDDR4 RAM, 4,000 milliamp hour battery, 2.4G Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth. Not much to say about the specs, I guess. Pretty standard stuff at this point. On the front, we get a D-pad, ABXY buttons, start and select, and dual thumbsticks. On the top, we have volume buttons that are backwards. <laughs> Pow Kitty has been doing this lately for some reason. HDMI hole so you can run this thing docked to a TV, reset and power button. On the bottom, we have dual stereo speakers, USB-C hole for charging, two micro SD card holes, one for system and one for games, a headphone hole, and an OTG hole where you can shove your dongle. I've really got to hand it to Pow Kitty. The Pooby Doop feels great. It's a very interesting feeling in the hands, but it's, it's hard to put into words. It's, it's like a, a narrow candy bar style handheld, but it, it's thicker. And that bulk is a good thing because it feels more substantial in your hands. But considering how thick it is, it's also vertically slim. And that, that brings the edges in nice and tight with the screen. And of course, we got to talk about these curves. I love me some nice curves to squeeze. And these humps just make this just fill out the palms of your hands. Considering the size, I was not expecting this to feel as comfortable as it does. My only gripe is with this sharp edge around back. My fingers kind of rub on that and it doesn't feel quite right. I found I have to hold it like this so that my fingers don't scrape on there. And I, I did get used to this pretty quickly, but it would be nice if that edge was just a little bit smoother. And one cool thing about the shape is that it's flat on the bottom. So it just you can just kind of plop it down on your desk just sits there like that. <laughs> kind of neat. I wish more handhelds could do that. 
And I, I really like the look of this handheld in general. It's a little weird, but there's something about it that feels unique. I got, it's kind of angular in some parts and rounded in others. Not too bulky, but spacious where it counts. I really like it. I can see myself grabbing this often just because it's so different than most other handouts. And now we come to the controls. And as usual, the controls are good, but there's one thing that isn't great. Why is there always one thing? Surely it can't be that hard to make a retro handheld with perfect controls. It's probably super easy. Probably. The one thing is the D-pad. It's got a bad case of false diagonal-itis. Now, it usually doesn't bother me in games, but I found it most annoying here in the menus of the device. Sometimes I'd be moving left and the list of systems would jump as if I had pressed up instead of left. Sometimes you can fix this with a tape mod or whatever, but apparently this thing is annoying to get into. And, and like, come on, why is there always one thing wrong? It's so close to being perfect. Everything else is fine, as you'd expect. Good buttons, comfortable triggers, L1 and R1 are a tad clicky, but not terrible. But one thing that is great here is the thumbsticks. I don't know if Pow Kitty is using new sticks here, but these are way more accurate feeling than we typically get. They're just Switch style sticks, but these are better than even my RG556, which is almost twice the price of this thing. Credit where credit's due. Good job, Pow Kitty. Please keep using these sticks from now on. The screen is another strong point of this thing. It's a 5-inch display, IPS, so great viewing angles, and OCA laminated, of course, and it has a resolution of 1280 by 720 at, the, at this size, that is a beautiful resolution. The images are super crisp, and that's plenty of pixels to give us lots of good options for integer scaling on the majority of systems. It's bright and colorful and beautiful. Granted, most screens are amazing these days, but this one really hit me. As soon as I turned it on for the first time, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I could get behind this. And, and then I did, and I saw that the only thing behind it was a sticker. So, so I went back to the front where the, where the screen is. And the sound is good. We get downward firing speakers, which obviously everyone loves, but they're they're fine. They're they're loud enough, not not super bassy, but nice, clean, crisp sound. No complaints. Luckily, the Pooby Doop ships with Jellos as the system, which is great. Jellos is an amazing implementation of emulation station for these RK3566 devices. You'll get no complaints from me about Jellos. I love it. But what you will get complaints from me about is the actual settings that they have enabled by default. I've gone through and fixed most of them, but take a look at Final Burn Neo here. For example, see how the games are stretched to full screen? I know some people like it like that, but it looks terrible to me. And, and they have this set individually for each system. So when you're in the systems page, just press select, go down to advanced system options. And in here, you can set the aspect ratio to default and change whatever else you want. Turn off the default shader or select a better one. But that's one of the best things about Jellos right there. You get easy access to all this stuff. You can also connect to Wi-Fi for retro achievements. You can change the theme. I'm a big fan of the default Jellos theme. You can enable auto save and load. And of course, you can load up the game and access the retro arch menu and make whatever tweaks and stuff that you want to do in there. Having a great system on the Pooby Doo means that you'll get a great experience out of the box and we'll probably have other systems supported in the future. Another thing I like about the out of the box experience on the Pooby Dupe is the games lists. Are they're they're really good. For the most part, you'll get really clean, complete ROM sets for all the main systems with no dupes or a ton of non-English games. There are a few less than ideal things about the games lists. Like for example, several of the arcade games appear in multiple systems. I would have preferred to just have one system like Final Burn Neo for all the arcade games. But whatever, it's a, it's a small gripe. And we get a ton of the higher end games. Almost 200 Nintendo 64 games, 85 PS1 games, 250 Nintendo DS games, 20 Dreamcast games, 35 PSP games. And these are all good game lists. All the best games from all these systems are on here. Of course, you can always add your own SD card or add your own games, but it's nice when you get a device that you can start enjoying right away without faffing about with a bunch of bullcrap, you know? Yeah, you do. And now we come to the best part of the Booby Doop, really, which is the gaming experience. I love using this thing to play games. It's a combination of the comfortable form factor, the beautiful big screen, the unique look and feel of the device, the awesome system, and the performance. 
Almost anything that plays on here is super enjoyable. One system that I really like emulating on wider screen devices is Game Boy Advance because it, it's my favorite system for retro games, but also because GBA games were 3 by 2 ratio, which is more widescreen than the 4 by 3 ratio older systems. So the GBA games fill out the screen beautifully. Although even the 4 by 3 systems do look great on here. Like I said, we have a very high pixel density on this screen, so we get lots of options for integer scaling. Enough pixels where it doesn't matter as much and the horsepower to use interpolation shaders to compensate for when we can't. Check out my integer scaling video if you want to know more about that topic. But this handheld is good for that stuff. That's what, that's what I'm saying. And the performance is solid here for the higher end stuff. I've tested a lot of RK3566 devices, like, like a lot of them. And the, the Pooby Doop has some special sauce that puts it near the top of the pack. Harder to run games like Cruising USA aren't going to run perfect, but it's a, a lot closer to running perfect here than it usually is on this chipset. I think it's a combination of maybe the cooling and the updated system. I saw they had a max performance overclock setting applied to all the 3D systems, which probably helps. There are games that struggle on other devices with this chip, like Dead or Alive 2 on Dreamcast. It's running great here. Even Vice City Stories on PSP was totally playable with frame skip enabled. It's not going to run everything you throw at it, but you can enjoy a ton of stuff on here. Everything up to Dreamcast and PSP, you'll be able to play most stuff problem free. I know lots of people are annoyed that we're still getting RK3566 devices, but I'm not one of them. There's a lot more to what makes a device enjoyable than the performance, and as long as the performance is good for the price, then I don't care what chip is running it. Speaking of which, let's talk about the price. The Pooby Doop is $90 from Lit NXT. That's the same price as if you bought it from Pow Kitty directly, but with Lit NXT, you get free shipping. And at that price, it's a very competitive offer. It's a bit cheaper than most of the devices that it competes with, but what you get here is the unique and comfortable form factor and the big, beautiful screen. There's a lot of personal preference when it comes to picking a handheld or buying a second handheld or a third handheld or a 47th handheld. So I can't say for sure that this will be the perfect choice for you, depending on what else you have. But I will say that I love it and I will personally be grabbing this quite often to play games on because it's so comfortable and easy to get along with. And I love the look of it, which is actually a really big factor for me. So uh, I mean, just, just look at it. If, if you like the look of it, then get it. And if you don't, then get something else. I'm not here to tell you what to do, except when it comes to clicking the subscribe button. You do have to do that. I, I'm not asking. I'm telling. Click it. Now. If you want to get your own Pow Kitty Pooby Doop, there's a link to where you can get this in the word place below. And that brings us to the end. Thanks for watching and stuff. If you like this video, then definitely check out this video, my review of the RGB30, which is another very cool device by Pow Kitty. There's a link on the screen now and down in the word place below. Thank you so much to my generous supporters on Patreon. It brings me one step closer to being able to make a living doing YouTube and I can't thank you enough. And that's it for me. I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.